Absolutely Alphas. Happy Mother's Day from Absolutely Alphas, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. With Tone, Trina, Kim, and special guest Frank Castle. What's going on? Absolutely. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe and notification button right away. And uh, and you can find this artist. He's Frank Castle 13 on all platforms, YouTube, everywhere. iTunes, Twitter. Spotify. Everywhere. Instagram. He's out there. The music is wonderful. So thank you for joining us, Frank. Yeah, what's 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 you what's, 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 Yeah, man, what's doing for your mom today, man? My mom's actually I, I don't have no mom, you know, unfortunately she passed. Oh, I'm sorry. So did ours. So Yeah, same, same here, boat, same yeah. here. You know, we feel you, man. Same here. So uh we listened to your last single Z Check. It's dope. We appreciate that. Absolutely. So Z Check, tell us a little bit about Z Check. Um, what is the, the Z about? I mean, you know, um, you know that Kodak came out with the um the ZZ, you know, just following the platform and in the form of, you know, Azos representing our Azos, our culture. And you know, so I came up follow suit with the Z check. The Z check is basically letting them know that, you know, this is a Zo and you basically checking the mic on some Z on some Z talk. So, you know, I put Z check as to be what it is. For me, um I chose that 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 frame and because, you know, that Cali swing because Cali is the sister of down in Miami. You know what I'm saying? They they um they like they comp they they compare is them is the, like almost the same. So I put that Cali flavor and that down south flavor together, mix it up, and gave it a whole summer summer flavor. Oh, nice! I yeah. like it. I, I definitely like the beat and everything about the song. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I meant while we're still on the topic of the Z check, I meant to ask you. I, I like the the special effects you use with the red eyes. You put the red eyes like the pit yeah. bull, like some of the some of the dudes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like that because I mean, I'm I'm into like you know comics and action movies. Like I like that kind of stuff. But I mean, what what was your what was the concept behind that though? If you mind me asking. Well, everybody that had everybody that had red eyes was basically an artist. Uh, artists, I so I used the red eyes on artists to show that uh, the artist that was featured on the video, we put red eyes on. Got you. Okay. Yes. Good. And, and okay. And then when they and they come out with their videos, they'll recognize, you know, people recognize them from your video. Yeah. That's what's up. I like that. And I learned something new from your uh, your single. Oh yeah, what oh yeah is. I looked at when I first, at first glance, I'm like, boy, like, what is that? But then when I watched the video, I was like, oh, it's like your homie, your friend, ah, something like that. Yeah. And um, that's, that was dope, too. That, that's a Miami thing right there? Yeah, see, now we have a lot of Spanish people in the community. You know, we call them Oye. You get what I'm saying? So the Oye was like a con contribute to all my Spanish homies. You know, um, they never showed that side. You see Pitbull, he started rapping. He, he transformed to reggaeton and stuff like that. But I have some Spanish friends, you know, that's that's deep in the game. And, you know, I have one specific Spanish homeboy that actually passed, and that was like a best friend of mine. So I dedicated that song to him. And, you know, so they could see the whole dying frame of Miami, how it transitioned from Little Havana all the way to Little Haiti and stuff like that. Dope, nice. Man. Dope. Dope. So I did watch your uh, interview with uh, Badland Entertainment 305. Yeah, that's when I first got out. I did that interview when I first jumped. Okay, nice. So uh, I never knew anything about Little Haiti and uh, Pork and Beans projects and all that. <laughs> so that's yeah. that's where you're from. And I wanted to ask you about Pork and Beans projects. Is that the official name, or is, did you guys yeah, talk? A, it's Liberty City. It's called Liberty City, but you okay. know, um, it's called Liberty City. But you know, um, growing up, being young around there, you know, we had Pork and Bean, Pork and Bean projects. So that name, that name actually came, that name actually was, uh, I think it was established, it was established over there uh, for a long period of time. So instead of, some people would call it Liberty City, somebody would call it the nickname Pokemon Projects. You know yeah. Now, and did it get the name because I was looking at the buildings in the back and I was like, well, maybe it's the color of the building, that's where it came uh, from. Do, do you know its origin? Nah, nah, his origin, his origin, his origin is based on, the Poker Bean Project is based on low-income homes, you know, um, you know, that's where it basically go down there, you know, it's a lot of murder that happened down there, you know, um, first 48 stay down there, so 
it, it's a trouble. It's a trouble area where you have young kids growing up. It's some of them making it to the NFL. Some of them making it out of their dream, but it's, it's barely some of them that doesn't make it past the age of twenty. Oh wow, that's wow. that's unfortunate. Okay. Thanks. So it's good you uh, put them on a map and doing something positive in that area. You know, I'm sure they appreciate you. So let's let's talk about this sentence you beat. Uh, did ten on forty, right? And yeah. Gave thirty back. So yeah. uh, when you were doing that time, was there anything that you took from that uh, that bid that was uh, remarkable or that you learned? While you were there, I know it's probably a lot of different things, but there's something that's outstanding that you said. Wow, I'm glad. I mean, I, I grew up. I grew up in there. You know, I was in there since 1920. I got out at the age of my at the end of my 20s. You know, I grew up mentally in there and learned that you know, in life you have to cherish the little things. You get what I'm saying? You have to cherish. You have to cherish the air. You have to cherish the knowledge. You have to cherish. It's a, it was a learning experience for me. Because um, being in the streets, you know, being in the streets and living that life out there, the only thing that's left, if you if you even made a pass through getting shot, or it wasn't a gang, or you've been you've been a troublesome child. Now, if you can make it through the transition of being in prison and getting out, and you can make a change for yourself, it's like it's like you've been through it all. You know what I'm saying? You've been through it all. So me learning in that, almost losing my life, and then also fighting and and stuff in there so it, it gave me it gave me the mentality of to to know that life life you, you can't measure you can't measure the greatness of what you can learn in life you know what i'm saying so you right. got to develop you got to develop within a development yourself right that's what's up yeah i just know you know i got the next question yeah yeah, yeah. uh yeah frank castle so uh some um i just thought of the like uh, I didn't even have this written down as a question, but um, like, did you do any recording, any of your recordings, like while you went inside? Did you do any recordings in there? I, I know did, some. I think we, we did. We did a couple. We did a couple tracks. We did a couple of tracks. But the computer got crashed. Through the process, uh, the computer got crashed. So I definitely was looking for them when I got out, so I can go ahead and put them out. But the computer got crashed. But I wrote hella songs. While I was in there and confined. So when I got out, Oye was actually one of the songs I wrote in there. Um, uh, Check In, the song Check In was actually one of the songs I wrote in there. So it's, it's more songs that I have that's coming out that I wrote in there and transitioned into the, today's hip hop. So you, you, if you guys, if you guys didn't check in at Check In Season 26, the album I had out already, you'll hear a lot of that in there. Oh, dope, 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 dope. Again, actually, office. We're here with Frank Castle, thirteen, Miami's the general. So, uh, let's let me ask you about that. How did you acquire that surname, uh, the general? Well, I call myself the general, not the general of Miami. Well, I'm um, I'm the general of my hometown, which is Lil Haiti. And the reason why I call myself the general of Lil Haiti is because I also I also give back to the community, not just you know just talk. I, um, we have a nonprofit organization called La Haiti Baby, which every Christmas, Thanksgiving, back to school, we reach out and give every Tuesday. We reach out and give our food to the families that's in need, and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I gave my name La Haiti, and I'm, I feel like I'm the only one that's actually putting on for the city like that in that in that in that aspect to call myself the general. Ah, I like that. What's the name of the nonprofit? Lil Haiti Baby. Lil Haiti Baby, you uh, did say that. Okay, Lil yes. Haiti Baby. Dope, nice, dope. nice. Uh, let me see. When you uh, first started rapping, I know you like Biggie Smalls, but what was what were some other artists that you think uh, helped form your career or form you as an artist? I mean, I was a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I like to say I'm a music I'm a music I'm a music fanatic. You know, I I listen to music. Every music, every genre. I could go from pop. I can go from rock. I can go from um, soul. I can, I can. But music, definitely. Listening to back in the days, listening to the Ghetto Boys, listening mm-hmm. to even Trick Trick Daddy, them Poison Clan, JT Money. Um, listening to um, I can go back where as a uh, 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 Craig Mack, 
I can go back to the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole bad boy Nas. I go back to Nas. I go back to when Jay Z put first versus record. I can go back to the South with the Outkast. I can go mm-hmm. back to P, uh, the Cash Money when they first started. I just, I just love music. I just yeah. love music so much. So, and Biggie, the reason why I fell in love, what made me fall in love with Biggie was his story. To me, was raw. I love Pac too. I love Pac. But I felt like Biggie, Biggie's story was raw. He wasn't a poet as Pop, but his his story felt raw, and I I could relate. I could relate to his story more better as being a young dude growing up in the circumstances I grew up. You know, Pac was more in a revolutionary life, and you know, Black Panther and everything like that. Where Biggie was out here on the streets with the Robin mom kicking him out. You know, he trying to change his life. You get what I'm saying? So I could have more to that. I could relate more to that than so far as uh, the the pop. So I and then Biggie wasn't a scary nigga. You get what I'm saying? That's why, that's why I felt like Biggie because I felt like he was the only one on the East Coast took over the whole West Coast. Like he he took on the whole West Coast. Yeah. Um. And I, something you said that really struck a chord when you said that your your passion and love for music in general, like all genres, all genres. <laughs> I think I think that's like you know one of the marks of like a great artist. Yeah, like some something I hear a lot of great artists say, you know, in the mainstream is like they love all categories. And uh, something I peep in the music video too. I keep talking about your music video in Z Tech because I saw you doing finger push-ups, man. So like you you on your fitness grind because like you don't see you don't <laughs> see you doing finger push-ups, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was a little funny clip, man. You know, I, I work out. You know, as I work out, you know, I, um, I'm I'm in tune with the physiques and um, you know, the strength, the strength in the body, upper body, down body, you know. So I had that that little humor in the video showing that you know, gangsta gorilla, who I be, you know, it was, yeah. you know, it needed, it needed hey. that. You, know. you basically showing them like, yeah, you know, you you can shoot or scrap. You showing them all that, like, yeah, I got I got all of it. That's yeah. that's what that's what, you know what I mean. That's what's up. He's an actual fitness authority himself, my brother. Yeah, yeah, I said I had to appreciate that. Like he I, I, people I saw you doing the finger push ups. I, I instantly thought about Bruce Lee when I saw that. <laughs> right away. <laughs> right away. Uh, so you did, you mentioned other genres. What other genre would you say outside of hip hop that you listen to the most? I like soothing music. You know R and B. I like R and B. I like listening to R and B. Like R and B music that make like shot day. Like you know, um, oh, I love uh, that. Cher, Cher. I listen. Uh, even Gloria Stefan, you know, like R and B that really, really used to touch the soul and make you feel good about yourself, make you yeah. feel good about you. You know, um, um, I, I, I'm gonna say the song, but I forgot. I think it's called The People. The name of the group is The People Something. Was it Long As You Keep Your Head in the Sky? <laughs> Oh, uh, wow. Yes, I know what you're talking wow. about. It is something like the people or the people's nation or something like that. Yeah, I know, what you're you know that song right there, like you know that song right there. You know with Mike, so it gives me. It gives, I'm a young dude, but it gives me. I was raised. I was raised amongst a lot of old cats. You know, I was raised with my young age too, pair. But I pick. I pick. I pick the side where off everybody were like, "You are you a black sheep?" Because the type of stuff I used to like, the type of music I used to listen to, and you know it used to get me get me going. So music basically was my life. Yeah. yeah. Music helped me a lot. And a lot of times oh, yeah. get by a lot of rough turbulences and things in my life. That, so that's I can that's why that. we're here. That's why we do this. You that's know, why we basically. Do this, yeah. And, and I, I think it's also ironic. You said you said this, Sade was one of your favorites because, um, you know, we, we all talked about losing our mothers. And like that, that was like our mom's like that was her favorite, artist. favorite artist, for Sade, man. It's yeah. crazy. It's so, crazy. Yeah. How that my dad, my dad, my dad was in love with Janet. Um, my mom was in love with uh, I think it's Shirley Mur- Shirley Murdoch. Uh, yeah, I think she was in love with Shirley Murdoch. So you know, a lot, a lot of music like Aretha, God bless the dead, Miss Aretha, uh, Tina Turner, you know, um, uh, Diana Ross, you know, people that's passed, you know. Being growing up, being in different households, listening to those music, it really get me tuned in. That's how that's how I actually know how to create different music by right. by having that background of 
that substance background. Like, damn, I can go way back and put an old song, an old verse from an old song into a new beat because that's how I'm in tune with it. Right, that's dope. That's dope. That's I got two more questions. You got any more questions? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually riding out now. I, I'll think of something else. Okay. <laughs> So no, I'm, um, I'm enjoying myself though. Yeah, I know. I I, you, Frank. Again, yeah. Ashley Alpha is Frank Castle 13. So yeah. um my second to last question for you, Frank, is uh the 13, the number 13. What is the significance to that of that to you? Well, the number 13 is a lot of meaning to the number 13. Everybody thinks 13 is a bad number. Well, for me, I think it's a blessing number. I think um for me, I feel like the 13, I'm the 13th street disciple, bringing a um bringing a new era to the hip hop game, which was there, but you know, with a new flavor, you know, just a reminder to everybody that, you know, hip hop is never dead, that it still lives on, even though if you feel like it's changing, it's transformation, like you can still use hip hop in whatever area, if they bring you to the future, you can still bring the old, the old hip hop to modern day hip hop. Right, nice, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> 13 signifies itself by itself. You know, 13, I call myself 13 sometimes. Frank Castle, 13. Oh, you hear me saying 13 on the record. Ah, uh, nice. Let's go. And that, that kind of leads me into probably my last question. So um, basically, as far as the state of hip hop now and, you know, how you see it, um, what's... How do you how do you plan to impact hip hop? What do you hope What do you hope to? Um, how do you hope to impact hip hop? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't hope. I don't hope. I know. No, when great words of um um God bless the dead um Dick Gregory, you know um I don't hope I know that I will be an impact in hip hop because I know my history. You know what I'm saying. And, and I'm tuned in to every, everything. I don't dislike nothing. Is it, is it for today or tomorrow? I'll catch it out crazy. You know, I'll listen, you know, because I understand in time there's change. You know what I'm saying? There's time there's change. But once you're authentic, like it's catasthenics. You use weights, the weights to make you look some type of weight. But when you do catasthetics, even if you get bigger, you're still going to be in shape. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's how that, that that's how that's how that's how I feel like that's I, nice bring, I bring to the hip hop like you know catastatics with it. That mean that even though if it go out out of its genre, I'ma still be in shape, ready for it. You get what I'm saying? Got you. That is uh, and, and and I think my question came out wrong to be honest with you because I mean, but you still kind of answered it because I think what I meant to ask is what what exactly is the impact that you think you would have on hip hop. Um, but but you didn't answer because it's like hip hop might you know weaken or like get away from its like traditions, but you you still want to keep it strong. Is what I'm hearing you say, basically. Yeah. So that's what's up. That's what's up. And my last question, um, first almost two is two parts. Who, what mainstream artists right now do you uh, think or like? I would say the most at the moment, or somebody that you listen to often. That's mainstream. And uh, what projects do you have and, and what's in the future for you? The mainstream artists I listen to is a couple. You know, there's a couple I listen to that really. J. Cole, he's one of them. You mm -hmm. know, um, he's one of them. Most definitely, you know, Ross, he's one of them. You know, um, Meek Mill, Meek Mill is doing his dollar. He's one of them. You know, I like, I like, I, I like the ones that saying something and really like playing with the rap, you know, and knowing where they're going with it. You know, um, actually, uh, there's, there's a couple more. I can't name in my head. Uh, I can name in my head. Uh, I like Travis Scott. Travis Scott doing his thing. You know, um, yeah, he grows. I wasn't sure about him at first. But I, <laughs> yes, I like him more. Drake, more. Drake, Drake, most definitely. Drake, Drake is off top. You know, Drake, most definitely. I like Drake ever since he started. I was a Drake fan, you know. Um, I knew Drake was gonna be who he is today, cause I, I, I felt it. And, I, and when once I heard him on every Cash Money record, I was like, this man by himself is gonna cause damage, cause he has the total package. He has the total package. Yeah, he does. 
You feel me? Kodak, you know, Kodak coming and get. I listen to Kodak as a little bro. You know what I'm saying? I listen to Kodak. I listen to Kodak a lot. Um, there's a couple of them out there, you know, that's that's up and up and coming too. That I listen to, that that's making noise for themselves on the south on the south side of it. Mm. Okay. Cool. So what's next for you? What uh, you got any projects that you're currently involved in? Yeah. Um, I got a project dropping probably mid um June. I'm dropping another record on the 18th, which is Bring the Hood Back. On the 18th of this month, I'm dropping that record. And then in mid-June, I'll be dropping like a six, six-track six little EP. I'll okay. be dropping a little six-track EP, a dope EP. I don't, I don't think you guys heard of the Black Star yet. Um, I think you guys should go ahead and listen to that Black Star. Um, it's on DJ Feezy's mixtape. It's on DJ Feezy's mixtape. So, you know, that's a dope record, too, Black Star. Black Star, check it out. Well, uh, thank you so much again. Thank After you. the office, we're here with Black Ca uh, Frank Castle Frank 13. Castle. Sorry about that. Because he said, kept saying Black Star. Frank Black Castle 13. Star. Follow him everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, iTunes. Uh, last single Z-Check is out. Uh, Check-in season 26. That's out the album. Make sure you guys listen to that and look forward to his next project coming out in June. Thank you again. Uh, we appreciate the time. Thank, thank y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. You know, appreciate y'all for tuning in, reaching out. You know, every stone, every stone that's cast will be a stone to build a castle. You feel what I'm saying? So, you yeah. know, that's, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm just collecting gems right now. I'm collecting gems. So, once I get all the gems that's collected, you know, we finna go to the moon with it. Ah, no, that's right. I, I love the cast on that. Hence the cat. Your analogies are fire. I'm gonna yeah, tell you that right now. Man, I, I, I've been looking for more metaphors like that in the songs as well. Yes. And uh, make sure everybody, make sure you all, make sure you follow Frank Cast on all of his social media and, and his YouTube channel. Uh, make sure if you haven't already subscribed to, to both our channels and hit notification bells on both. Yes. Um, thank you guys for listening and thank you, Frank Cast. Appreciate y'all. Y'all actually hit me. I'm about to hit Rolling Loud right now. You know, we got Rolling Loud in Miami right now. I'm about to hit Rolling Loud, you know, and do some home interviews and some promo out there. So you guys, next year, if y'all ain't doing nothing, y'all come down here for Rolling Loud in Miami. Okay, okay. that's what's up. Oh, we will, absolutely. Word. All right, well, you have a yep. good day, and uh, thank you again. Thank Bless you. Appreciate you. All right, peace. See you.